In this series, we're going to cover implementing uh, HTTP functions using the serverless technologies of the various major cloud providers. This essentially means uh, Lambdas in AWS, Azure Functions in Azure, and GCP Cloud Functions. This thirty series is complements the Scaling in the Cloud series, and that series deployed a simple microservice using Python and Flask framework. And what we did is we, we deployed them with virtual machines or EC2 instances, and we would scale up the instances as the load increased and scale down as the load decreased. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, take the code that we did. We're going to adapt it. It was Flask code, and we're going to adapt it for the serverless functions and the various providers. It's not quite Flask. It's it's pretty much the same code. So you'll see sort of tongue in cheek in the materials where I call it Flasky or Flask like. And the goal is to deploy an identical API from the cloud scaling series using the native cloud features of each cloud provider. So by the end of the series, you should be able to learn how to deploy a Python-based HTTP endpoints across all three major cloud providers. And we're going to walk through a, a couple of tasks. Uh, the first one is we're going to deploy Python code for microservices using serverless technologies. That's Lambda for AWS, Azure Functions for Azure, and Cloud Functions for Google Cloud. Like the original series, we're going to use a document database for microservice data storage uh, that's very simple. It's storing a list of names and getting them. And we're going to use sort of the cloud native uh, document database provided by each provider. So for AWS, it's DynamoDB. For Azure, it's Cosmos DB. And then it's Firestore for GCP. Then we're going to attach HTTP endpoints to invoke the serverless code we deployed. Now that's API gateway for AWS, function app for Azure. And then Google is a little different because we've discussed in previous videos how Google likes to keep the simple cases simple. There is such thing as a API gateway, but for our very simple case, we do not need to use it. Cloud Run fits the bill. It routes every traffic as we expected. So we're gonna do the simple case. Uh, I'm thinking about doing another video on securing these APIs with uh, either Octor or Ping or one of those providers. Um, and, and that you would have to use a, a gateway for GCP. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to secure the HTTP endpoints. The first time we deploy the code, it's going to be uh, public. Anybody can access the endpoints. And so there's some cloud native ways to secure the endpoints. Uh, there's IAM integration for AWS, and we'll show you how you set the headers for that in Postman. There's function keys for Azure, which are pretty basic. Uh, they're probably the least secure of all the you know, native cloud providers. And um, then you use the JWT token, or I guess it's the JSON web token for GCP, which is sort of a variant of OAuth, which ultimately, you know, in, in the wild, you're probably going to use OAuth in some capacity secure APIs. But the cloud providers do provide these basic things, and we will cover them. But let's talk about serverless computing. Serverless, uh, it's kind of a misnomer. They say it's, it's serverless, and you might say no servers, but that's not the case. It's simply that you don't deploy the servers the cloud provider deploys the servers for you and handles the scaling, and then you only pay as for the number of requests that you use. Another way to think of serverless is it's the smallest amount of compute you can buy from these cloud providers. And essentially what you do is you give it some code, uh, or give the cloud providers a code, and it will invoke that code on various triggers. Now the trigger we're gonna use is HTTP, um, there's step functions, there are timers, there's um, stream processing, there's all sorts of ways that these are using, but the HTTP endpoints are what we're going to use as our trigger. For AWS, it's AWS Lambda uh, that runs code, um, integrates it with API Gateway. API Gateway is what leverage, which implements the HTTP endpoints, it defines the routes, um, it does uh, parsing of the parameters for you. And so we have a sort of a diagram of the AWS solution. And that includes the uh, Flasky gateway. And then it has a series of routes to find. And those routes go to the four endpoints, the good to go, the candidates, candidate get, candidate post. And it, it's interacting with a DynamoDB table to actually store the data. 
Of course, it's available on the internet. Then we've got the Azure solution. In Azure, uh, they, there's Azure Functions, and there's a Function app. And the Function app is what glues it all together, uh, gives you the HTTP routing requests. Uh, it, when we look at the code, you'll see that it's a little bit more like Flask in that you have one Python file, and the routing is actually in the code. And so here is the diagram for that. It looks very similar to the other ones. You have the Function app, which sort of acts as the gateway, is the same as AWS. And it's routing to those four endpoints. Uh, good to go, candidates, candidate get, candidate post. And then it's interacting with the Cosmos DB table to actually store the data. Here is the Google Cloud platform. And it is by far the simplest to get started, which is in line with what we've observed with other things with Google Cloud. They like to keep the simple case simple. So Cloud Functions give us everything we, we need. If you have uh, issue two endpoints that get triggered, um, now you can use an API gateway, but we just didn't need it for this example. Where you would need it was better routing, authentication, authentication, rate limiting, and logging, where that uh, gives you better better features. And, and if we did the OAuth integration with Octo or Ping, that's that's where we would do that. So its diagram is um, very similar. The uh, you've got the internet and the cloud functions that are running under Cloud Run. The only thing that's a little different is there's a candidate function. And the candidate function includes a get and a post and one. So that since the other ones have separate endpoints or separate modules, it has one module that does it. And then and it's interacting with the Firestore uh, database. So let's talk about languages. We're going to use Python. I typically, with the serverless examples, I, I go with the interpretive language, not the compiled languages, because generally, if you're going to do a compiled language, you have to manage the compilation and uploading the zip, which is not hard, but uh, I just always like using the uh, the interpretive languages. So they, they support a bunch of languages out of the box. You've got Node.js, Python, Java seems to be sort of the common base, but then they have other ones, PowerShell, Go, and it's a little bit different. But at the end of the day, they also have the ability of doing custom runtimes. So these custom runtimes, you can be any any language. Um, there's a little more work, but like I, like Rust is an up and coming language. I'm sure they'll add the out of the box, but you can add Rust for a customer time. So let's talk about securing these serverless APIs. By default, when we deploy them, we'll deploy them once, and then we'll deploy them a second with some sort of security or some sort of um, securing them. And the there's three different ways of doing it. Uh, now these are lightweight methods. Uh, and a lot of examples, you're probably going to use OAuth like we talked about. I'm talking, thinking about doing a video just for that. But for AWS, you create a IAM user with an access key and secret, and you give it access to the function. And then you form, you use this AWS SIG4 toolkit, which Postman supports, which we'll show you, for um, creating the headers necessary to authorize. Um, and it, it's it's fairly secure, and there's libraries for doing it um, because if you leak the the signing, the token's only good for so long. Um, so it's it's you know decent. Then you have Azure Functions. This one's a little more janky because it uses these keys, and the keys are static. You can rotate them, but if you leak the keys, people can have keys to the kingdom. Uh, but it is one way of securing it. Uh, and you can rotate the keys. You can manually do it. It's just um, the keys aren't like time bound like the other ones where you, you get a, a token and it's valid for an hour or, or whatever, and then it expires. Then the final one is Google Cloud Functions. Um, and that uses auth tokens, a, a JSON web token, which is kind of a variant of OAuth, like a service authentication through OAuth. Um, and you retrieve that through Google, Google Cloud Auth command. Then you put it in the header. And again, for all three of these, we're going to secure, our, implement our API anonymous, then turn on security and show you how you interact with the service with headers once you've turned on security. I have deployed um, an AWS version. So uh, you run the validate script here, and then you can take this guy right here, uh, hop that into... Postman, 
which I think I've already done, and do send, and you see that that runs the API. Then there's a uh, candidates, which will give you all the candidates. And then there is a uh, candidate, or I can say homie, and it'll load just one candidate. And then finally, there are um, a post. If I want to add homie two, I hit homie two. And then go back to candidates and get. So there we've, we've driven the very simple microservice API.